I said we were going to look at the make color method in this video, but then I realized that doesn't make sense since we can't zoom into the fractal and see the changes in color yet. So instead we're going to work on zooming in this video. Also note that I changed some of the formatting for this application. I added divider lines to make our methods uh, clearer and I also added a few comments here and there. So let's go to the canvas and this is where, go where we're going to implement the mouse listener so we can actually respond to mouse click events. I decided to do the mouse listener on a canvas and not on the Fractal Explorer JFrame. The reason is simple is because if we did it on the JFrame then we'd have an extra spacing right here for this little gray line which is about 22-23 pixels thick. While if we just do it on the canvas then we don't have to worry about that difference. Which makes things a whole lot easier. So add implements, oops, spell it right, implements mouse listener. And when you implement the mouse listener, you're going to need to override five methods. So let's do that. So these are the five methods you need to override for the mouse listener interface, but we're actually only going to use some code or write some code in one of them. And so that's going to be the mouse pressed. So the first thing we're going to do with this mouse event object is get the x coordinate and the y coordinate of where the mouse clicked. So let's do that. X. There's a neat method called get x, and similarly for y, it's called get y. And this will get the x and y coordinate of the mouse relative to the canvas, which is exactly what we want. Next, we're going to say mouse.getButton. This will determine whether we press the left mouse button or the right mouse button. So let's start the left one. So that's the case that our switch statement is button one. And let's put break for now. And the right is the case where mouse event is button three. Button two is reserved for, um, so, some mouses have a, a scroll in the middle, so that's what button two would be for. And when we, when, when we click on the left, we're going to want to call a method we're about to create called adjust zoom. And we're going to adjust the zoom relative to x and y, and the only thing we're going to change here is we're going to say zoom factor multiplied by 2. And same thing for right, except it's going to be divide by 2. So, so the left button is going to be zooming in, that's why the zoom factor is increasing, and the right mouse button is going to be to zoom out. That's why the zoom factor is decreasing, or that's why we're dividing by two. If you want a more intensive zoom, then feel free to modify this. So now let's create, actually, wait, we need to add one more thing. We need to call a method on our canvas. So in the constructor, we actually need to say add mouse listener on this. And this should initialize uh, the fact that we have a mouse uh, moving around on the canvas. 
and now to create a just zoom. And it's going to take new x and double new y for double new zoom factor. Good. And here we're going to modify what our top left x is, what our top left y is, and what our new zoom factor should be as well as call update fractal. So, so the top left x is going to be the new x divided by the zoom factor, while top left y is going to be new y divided by the zoom factor. And our zoom factor is going to equal the new zoom factor right here. And then we're going to perform a shift once again. So top left x minus equals the width divided by 2 divided by the zoom factor. And top left y plus equals, don't forget to change that, the height divided by 2 divided by the zoom factor, and now one last call to update fractal. Now what does this all mean and what does this do? The first two lines zoom into the fractal essentially by shifting top left x and top left y one way. And then we're setting zoom factor equal to this new zoom factor. And we shifted top left x and top left y one way, but they were off-centered, so we need to recenter them with these two lines right here. And then we can update our fractal and we're zoomed in right where we clicked. So let's see if this works now. So open up the terminal and go to wherever your, your Fractal Explorer is. So now if I click on the screen, click here, you can see we're actually zooming into the fractal. However, the color is not changing and that's what we will be focusing on in the next video. But check out how cool this is. You can theoretically zoom in forever, although, although the, the precision of a double on this computer does limit us to how far we can zoom in. So here you can see I'm approaching the maximum. And soon you can start making out the details of the pixels. See those are, this is as far as you can get. And if you right click, you can zoom out as much as you want. And if you're having performance issues zooming in, you can reduce the number of max iterations that you do, although you will get a less precise fractal. That's the only thing I am warning you about. So, and also one more thing, if you click on where there's a lot of black, that means you're doing more iterations because all these black points mean that the iter count is equal to max iter, meaning each of these black points needed to do at least uh, however much max iter was. I think mine was 200 if I, if I check quickly.
Uh, yeah, yes it was. So each of these black points did 200 iterations, meaning it's fairly slow to zoom in where there is some black on the screen. Well, if I zoom into where it's blue, then it's there's a faster performance. Guys, thank you for watching, and we're going to keep working on this Fractal Explorer in the next video. See you then.